Hello YouTube, this is Daz of the Cameraman. Today is Sunday the 15th of December 2013 and this is a look at uh, another one of the videos by BP Earthwatch uh, regarding Comet Ison. In this video, BP Earthwatch claims that uh, Comet Ison is off course and he cites information from astronomer Bruce Gary. Let's have a listen to his video. Now guys, if you noticed on Bruce Gary's site, on the 6th, of uh, December, he, they were trying to track it. And remember, Bruce is the one that first recovered it. Well, what he's saying is uh, they were having trouble. Now, he at first, I thought he was trying to say that this uh, image with the tail was ISON, but he doesn't say that. But he does says the orbit has been changed. And that's what I was talking about on the video last night, guys. It's not where the models are saying it is. So if you're trying to track ISON compared to Lovejoy, you're way off bounds. You're off by two to three days on your tracking. Bruce Geary, again, this guy is an astronomer. His credentials are very strong. And he's saying that it's off track, too. But remember, in the video two days ago, I showed that we're, even though at that time they were different locations, they both crossed at 0.627 AU from the Earth. And that's what we saw. But again, they, these guys know it's off, and uh, they're tracking it also. Now, Bruce is using ground-based instruments. He doesn't, he's, I'm not talking about NASA. He's an independent astronomer that used to work and did a lot of uh, design work uh, when they were doing radar imaging for the moon and things like that. It's a real long resume. But again, he's tracking it, trying to track it, but the orbit has changed and that was my point. Okay so here we hear BP Earthwatch claiming that the trajectory the course of Comet Ison has changed and he is saying that Bruce Gary is uh, is saying this himself. Let's hear what Bruce Gary actually has to say about this. I emailed Bruce Gary uh, via his website and sent him the link to BP Earthwatch's video Geminids Tonight Ison Off Course and here is Bruce Gary's reply to my email. He writes, David, Comet Ison has died. The remnants will consist of tiny dust particles microscopic in size, a field of fragments possibly the size of popcorn balls and with a sim similar density, and very diffuse gas atoms and molecules. All of these breakup products are moving away from the Sun along a trajectory that will never be closer to Earth than 50 million miles, or half an astronomical unit. This is so far from Earth that we will never encounter them. All dead comets are harmless, and Comet Ison is especially harmless. Prior to Comet Ison's perihelion breakup, the tiny dust particles produced by outgassing were pushed away from the comet by solar light pressure and their orbits have been altered to greatly differ from the comet's trajectory. Comet Ison passed near the Earth's orbit last November 2 at a location where Earth will pass through in mid-January 2014. At that time, it is unlikely that any of the old comet dust particles will be near the Earth but if some are close, the most that these microscopic particles would do is produce a few pretty shooting stars. My web page with almost daily updates about Comet Ison has been misused by people who seem to want to create fear where none is justified. I suspect that when someone copies a picture from my web page and puts it on theirs with a caption stating that a UFO is flying in formation, they know exactly what they're doing and they don't care if they scare some of their viewers. Some people lack critical thinking skills and they are being unnecessarily frightened by outlandish claims. The most recent misuse of my webpage was by a chronic abuser of it, BP Earthwatch, where I was characterized as reporting that the comet's orbit has changed with an ominous undertone. In fact, all I reported is that my team attempted to image the comet in a wide field of view and a mysterious smudge was found 10 arc seconds away from the comet's expected location. The next day I reported 
that new imaging showed that this smudge must have been an artifact of the imaging process, and we had no idea of where the comet was. In fact, it it's probably is so faint, 20 second magnitude by one estimate, that only a professional telescope could see it. Such null results should not be mischaracterized by statements claiming that the comet was found to have changed orbit with an unstated implication that we're dealing with a rogue comet that wants to harm humans. I have been asked on several occasions to complain about such misrepresentations of my Comet ISON reportage and I declined to take action. I found these people to be somewhere between pathetic and amusing and I couldn't imagine that anyone would be alarmed by them. They were, in effect, creating something akin to a horror movie for the entertainment of others. But if anyone believes such outrageous distortions, then I hope someone will create counter web pages to refute the fearful ones. I'm not interested in doing this, so I appreciate anyone who will take on that role. Thank you, David Gregg, for being such a person. Signed, Bruce Gary, Arizona, USA. Here is Bruce Gary's webpage as linked to in BP Earthwatch's video. If we scroll to the top, uh, we can see the heading Comet Ison in Memoriam. Comet Ison observations by three non professional observers. You'll find a link in the description area to that. You will also find a link to my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X. There we have a number of astronomers and people with various other skills who are willing and able to discuss uh, various claims from YouTube videos and other things that are posted on the internet, the latest uh, fear videos that have been posted and so forth. We're happy to discuss these, um, these claims and debate them and uh, look at evidence for and against such claims. Everyone is welcome to join uh, Vortex, Voices of Reason to Explain X. Um, you'll find a link in the description area. Also, there is another web page I'd like to show you. This is Cosmophobia.org, a website run by Bill Hudson. Uh, this is a very good website that I recommend. Uh, debunks a lot of the sort of nonsense that we see on YouTube videos. And as it says here, this site will deal with various claims that invoke cosmophobia, where the fear factor is pumped up in claims in order to make something fairly mundane sound sinister and threatening. In addition to claims made about astronomy, we will also look into claims touching on other fields of science, such as geology and volcanology. We will approach all claims from a perspective of sceptical inquiry. The claimant must provide evidence that supports their claims, and extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. The Cosmophobia website also has a Facebook page, Cosmophobia on Facebook. You'll find a link to all of these pages in the description area of my video, and also a link to Bruce Gary's website. All right, maybe you'll believe me now. Leave me comments, everyone.